Um, uh, this is the next talk is by Joe Labine on clean and simple historical statistics. Great, Joe. Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm talking about a package today called the Clio package. Um, and my name is Jill. I'm based in Victoria. I, at the past six years, I've worked at a project called Kushat Global History Data Bank with a team that built, collected, and analyzed historical data sets. And I spent most of my career working with historical data. Uh, the goal of Sushat Data Bank is to collect and build data sets on human history, archaeology, anthropology uh, from secondary sources. So basically, we want to capture all of the knowledge that has already been recorded by experts. Um, we've been recently playing with the kind of semi-automatic integration of open source data sets that are available online into our data bank. So part of my work involves pulling large historical open source data sets and cleaning them. Uh, basically, my professor bosses come to me and they say, Jill, we need all the pre-modern data we can find on XYZ topic, and I go out and find it. One of the data sets I've worked with a lot recently is called Clio Infra. Uh, it's a really large historical data store with a huge range of data um, from like the number of cattle per capita uh, to the number of libraries, the number of conflicts. And it covers the whole globe and it goes back to 1500 AD in some regions. So my boss asked me to pull like 50 different data sets from Clio Infra uh, for a specific project. And I was like, cool, these are individual downloads and this will take the rest of my life. Uh, luckily, a PhD student named Bass Michelson is developing a really good R package that interacts with the Clio Infra Open API. Uh, these kind of packages let you pull big data sets a lot faster in a more kind of systemized way. Uh, Gapminder, World Bank, and other kind of data sources have similar open APIs, but I found this to be one of the better ones, especially for beginner R users like myself. Uh, basically, it's still under development, so it can be installed as a remote package. After installing, it's really easy to call up data. You can browse it by category or by variable. Uh, this image is uh, browsing by variable. You can see kind of the richness of data that can be pulled really easily through this package. Um, you can pull large data sets or create custom data sets by category, variable, country name, or within a specific date range. I'm going to give some examples. Uh, there's a lot of cool possibilities you can do. Um, you can compare two variables within uh, a couple of countries, or this is comparing two variables, well, for one variable in two countries. Um, so you can look just in one kind of call. You can call the type of data, the range, and the number of countries, uh, saving a ton of time. And I thought this was an interesting visual visualization. Um, it's the number of book titles per capita, new books published, and you can kind of see a huge spike risk for the French Revolution. Um, you can also pull lots of different variables in one country. Um, one cool part about the package is that it's not case sensitive. You can kind of have typos in it and it will uh, self-correct. It'll match to the nearest uh, the variable or country. Uh, so this is uh, the total number of cattle, sheep, pigs, and goats in China in 1600. Um, you can see like kind of the diversity of uh, Chinese agriculture through this. You can also pull um, a couple of different variables in several different countries. Um, so this is ratio of cropland and pasture um, in 1700 in a bunch of different countries. Um, you can see how Cambodia is very crop heavy. A lot of the other ones are very pasture. There are some downsides to this package. Uh, you can't pull everything in kind of one get. The data is pretty Western centric in general and Clio Infra. Um, uh, most of the 1500 data is based in England or Europe as is common with historical data sets. And then there's kind of the tricky issue that always exists with historical data is that there's often data for countries that didn't actually exist in the period that the data point is for. Like if you look at this data in 1700, a lot of these countries didn't exist in 1700. This is a map of the world in 1700. Uh, so some of the data is uh, through modeling backwards or they kind of take uh, empire boundaries like the Ashanti Empire and attach it to Ghana. Um, 
which is something that we kind of do at work, but it involves a lot of research and it's good to check what methodologies that the data sets are using. Um, thanks for coming to my presentation on this. Uh, the code for my visualizations is available at my GitHub and I'm gonna post it on my Twitter. Thank you.